All right, here we are again, part three. So generator, I'm sure you heard the term generator. Uh, actually, very similar to a motor. Uh, main difference, a motor converts electrical energy into physical movement, uh, mechanical energy, whereas generator will convert that mechanical energy into electrical energy. So kind of opposite, but they're very similar, uh, similarly designed. Yep, just to remember that to generate voltage, a conductor is moved through a magnetic field, or a magnetic field is moved over a conductor, or it could be alternating current uh, next to a conductor, because that alternating current creates a magnetic field that changes polarity. So just kind of a reminder. Anyway, so here's a picture of an AC generator, a little crank handle. So as I crank that little rotor through that magnetic field, I'm going to generate uh, electricity. Since these are slip rings, not commutators, I'm going to get uh, sine wave like this, it's going to positive and negative, positive and negative, as this north and south of this rotor rotates to the north and south of this permanent magnet. Okay. So, very similar to here, here you have a, a motor right here. Uh, if I power this up, uh, through this brush and this commutator, current goes through this rotor, creates a magnetic field like we talked earlier, that interacts with this permanent magnet, and then that's the, the motor version. Here you have the generator, and here you have a motor. Very similar. Um, but windings, as you go right here, we have different types. We have a delta right here, and we have a Y wound right here. Uh, kind of obvious why they're called that. Get it? Why? Ha. All right, so we use these different configurations depending on what you want. Do you want it for current, uh, speed, rated RPM, different types of configuration? Again, this is a schematic representation, not a physical. Uh, visual representation. They look like this. So here's a delta wound stator. This is one out of an alternator. Uh, you can tell it's delta because see how the coils are butted up to each other. So there's two wires here. If you look at this picture where they're um, crimped together and connected, there's two wires and three of them, just like here, two wires and three of them. But this delta configuration is wrapped into a Y, or excuse me, um, delta stator that's a circle like that with a steel lamina. And then here's your Y configuration. You have a stator neutral junction. There's three wires to that. And then the outside ones are just single wires. Just like over here, the physical representation. Again, this is schematic, this is physical. You have three in this neutral junction. And then you have three loops that go out to the diodes and that rectifier bridge. This is the alternator, but very similar to how, this right here is very similar to how the stators are wound in you know, electric vehicles and hybrids. So as far as motor controls, how do we control these, uh, this AC synchronous motor? Uh, basically, to change the speed of the motor, we change the frequency and to change the torque. Uh, basically, we'll the current and we'll change the torque. Okay. And I'll show you a picture of this in a little bit. We'll walk through to a Toyota simulator that will give you a graph on frequency and uh, current to change speed and torque. So basically, electric module, uh, to control the torque speed direction, it's very complicated. It's got to know the position of the rotor, the magnetic field, uh, and then in order to know where to start the rotating magnetic field in the stator. So, pretty complicated. We'll talk about those uh, in a little bit. So basically, it's monitoring current. Here's some Hall effect current sensors. As current goes through these, this strapping, it's going to create a magnetic field around it. That gets picked up by these Hall effect current sensors so the computer can um, determine which direction the current's going, where, how much, etc. So again, they're not going to start off on their own, just like that video we watched earlier. They're going to need a, a resolver encoder. ASC uses the term resolver encoder. So but basically what you have, and if you look at this picture down here, um, let me get this really up here real quick. So right here you have this permanent magnet rotor. So there's magnets in there and a steel lamina. And then you have an exciter ring right here. So it sends power through this exciter coil. That creates a magnetic field. And as it goes through this reluctor lobe, it's eccentric, odd shaped. It has these sine and cosine coils that are going to induce current based on the magnetic field from this exciter ring. All that to say, this sensor has basically three coils, and it's going to use magnetic fields and this odd shaped reluctor right here, back in here, that's going to change the permeability and reluctance of this magnetic field to induce current on these sine and cosine signals. And it's going to look something, let's see if we can get to a picture here. 
it look like this. Okay, all those words I skipped is just what I told you. Again, it'll be in a PDF form if you want it. But here's what the speed sensor resolver looks like. Here is a kind of a representation schematically. So you have your excited exciter coil, going to build a magnetic field, and then the sine and cosine right here. There's that reluctor, that odd shaped elliptical um, that influences that magnetic field. So over here is what you end up getting. The computer's monitoring the excitation coil, and it's going to measure or monitor coil B and coil C. Basically, it's GPS for the, the rotor. Um, at any given point, 360 degrees is what this line represents. At any given point, the three of these are going to be unique at that given degree. So no two spots on this line are going to have the same three voltages. So the computer can determine the rotor location, and if it knows where the rotor is, it knows how to power up the stator, and then at what speed, what direction, et cetera. Um, capacitors, just talking about, you know, we're talking about motor controls. In that uh, inversion process from DC to AC, because again, we're storing DC in that battery, we need to invert it to AC for this motor, um, there's lows and highs. Well, these lows and highs are filtered out by these smoothing capacitors uh, along the way. Uh, the thing you know about these is they quickly absorb a charge, they quickly discharge a charge. So very, very dangerous. And this is why we did the live dead live uh, before a break. Um, then we talked about doing um, checking for capacitors to drain. Either there's a passive drain uh, or, or um, an active discharge. So passive discharge, active discharge. Passive discharge is that big resistor where it drains over five minutes. Active discharge is where it dumps this energy into the stator uh, to convert it to heat. So. Be careful with these, um, very dangerous. Okay. Always assume they're charged, that's another one. Here's a schematic representation of capacitors. Basically, they're gonna collect those negatively charged electrons and these holes or a deficiency of electrons. And then when the battery switch is turned off, they can supply that same kind of energy current that they store. Here's what they look like in a, in a Toyota inverter under a Prius. And they're rated in microfarads, but uh, don't be so concerned about the rating. Uh, that's lethal. Just be careful and assume that they're all charged. Okay. Um, basically, just snubbers, little fixed resistor, capacitor to switch. This uh, helps basically voltage spikes and surges. Not that uh, we're going to go into that very much. And then here's the kind of the taters of what we're going to talk about is the inverter. So here's a schematic representation of that inverter. This is that stator motor, uh, the winding. This is your transistors, bit transistors, instead of gate bipolar transistors, these six right here. And then these six flyback diodes are gonna be for, we talk about uh, regeneration next week. So this DC input, this is coming from the high voltage battery. This is the inverter um, IGBTs under the um, inverter cover lid. So the 12 volt system is going to you know, basically, that's your high voltage computers. Uh, what's monitoring? It's going to signal this IG bit drive optocoupler that signals the base of these transistors, and that's what is going to send the current and uh, power in the ground to this motor, which is Y wound stator in a very specific rotating magnetic fashion. I know all of this is sounding intensely complicated. It's very difficult to not draw this on a whiteboard right now, but at the very end of this week, uh, at the bottom of this page, you'll see a video. Uh, saying bring it all together. Uh, it's going to be Toyota's, uh, I got it from Toyota training, so they'll kind of bring this all together, but this helps understand that training. So bear with me. <clears throat> so basically, we can't create a perfect AC sine wave like this is. What the inverter is going to do is it can change polarity and, um, and spikes like this right here, high, low, high, low, high, low. It's going to switch polarity. Peak to peak to simulate the AC sine wave. Here's another physical or a schematic representation. Here's your wire wound stator. Here's those uh, egg bits, those flyback diodes that work just like on an alternator, the diode rectifier bridge. Here's your high voltage battery right here, feeding it, and the ground, ground right here, ground right here. And then here's your resol uh, resolver encoder that tells the position of the rotor, that permanent magnet synchronous motor. Inverters. Uh, let's see. Uh, now I'm going to save this for next week. 
So basically the way the converter works is we're going to change it from AC to DC. This is through these flyback diodes right here. And I'll get, we'll save that for regeneration next week. Uh, DC to DC converter. Uh, basically this replaces the alternator on these hybrids. They don't ha have a, a traditional alternator because MG1, that big stator, is an alternator. So that that power that's being generated going to the high voltage battery, you know, some vehicles, you know, full hybrid 200 plus volts, uh, that's going to go through a DC DC converter or like a step down transformer that's going to regulate that to 14 volts, which is going to be used to charge the auxiliary battery and run the auxiliary systems. Okay, and then that gets then stepped down again to five volts for uh, voltage reference circuit sensors for like the electronic control. So basically this replaces that. And if you remember on the Honda IMA, it was in the back behind the high voltage computer. There was a DC DC converter. Typically it's gonna have the same type of um, bolt eyelet uh, outlet of an alternator. It's gonna look similar, but it looks like it's on the side of a computer. That's probably your DC DC converter uh, or it's internal to the inverter and it's hard to see. Boost converter. So Prius is gonna be able to have a boost converter to run it from 200 volts up to 600 volts plus to be used uh, when needed uh, on demand, like up the hills. We'll go into that much more, but basically it's a transformer. Uh, Overmodulation I mentioned earlier, these are your signals that we're, we're creating through IGBTs in that inverter. We can not create a perfect sine wave. We create something very similar to this, uh, but if we overmodulate it like this, you can, get, you can change your horsepower, volt uh, and torque, but the trade-off is less efficient, heat, and there's some other trade-offs again that are more complicated than here. So the sync average voltage, if I create a signal similar to this, it's averaging this sine wave. Uh, speaking of heat, so the bottom of this Toyota Prius inverter has these coolant passages to remove heat from those, those IG bits. They create a lot of heat. Uh, even not, not even running, remember, just ready only. They're going to create quite a bit of heat. So as soon as that car is ready on, uh, it's going to generate heat. MEX, the motor electronic cooling system, is going to run its well, electric water pump, and that's going to run coolant through this passage to remove that heat as soon as the vehicle is ready to run. Okay, so we're going to uh, basically, I'm going to conclude this part, and then look down, you'll see me explain an electric motor, uh, just a 12 volt electric motor, and then below that, we'll have bring it all together with. Toyota's PowerPoint that they use for their technicians that I have permission to use. So we will see you on in that video.